So, so welcome. Uh, we have some guests. Jerry, you might recognize, longtime viewers, and we have Denny here. They were kind enough to come on to the uh, on the program today and talk about the sour that they brewed. So, I'm not gonna get too much into it. That's what they're here for. Uh, so, yeah. So, guys, tell us about the what you brewed there. Yeah, let's let's talk about this. It's it's it is a sour. It's it's not extremely sour at all. It's a little sour, uh, but really it, it was the name of the beer is sour and free. And there's a big story behind this, and it goes back to Big Brew uh, last May. If you're not familiar with Big Brew, um, it's it's kind of it's what National Homebrew yeah, Day, National Home and then um, Pikes Peak Brewing Company in Monument is um, they're they're generous enough every year for this Big Brew event. Um, they'll make a, a batch of wort on their um, on their professional system, system yeah. there. And then they'll sell it to home brewers for usually about 20 bucks for six, seven gallons, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of us uh, home brewers will go up there every first weekend in May, first Saturday, and uh, buy a batch of wort. And um, Denny and I both went up there. I believe we both brewed our own beers. We, we, we both did. got batches. Probably the two of you did too. Maybe yep. I, I had to miss it. Yeah, I did. I made a raspberry wheat. You made a. I made a Belgian wheat. It was amazing. Yours yeah. was great. That, yeah, I um, really loved it. But. Oh, um, did you, did you, oh, I think I just made an American oh. wheat. Yeah. Oh. So we yeah. were, uh, it was also a Cinco de Mayo party at Jeremy's house afterwards. Oh, right. <laughs> so we were brewing that afternoon. So we ran back into his garage and brewed. And but, uh, before, but before we left, yeah. um, Chris uh, up there, the owner at, at Pikes Peak, he came out before we had left there, and he asked if anybody wanted extra work because they had extra work, and he was just going to give it away for free. Um, and so, you know, I look at Denny, and, and we're trying to figure out how we can, you know, take another seven gallons of wort, and then what we would do with it. And somebody in the club, I don't remember if it was, was it was you no, or it um, might have been Mike Bordick. No, it was. Uh... Fishes. No, go. well, one of them oh. suggested that we oh. take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I found a bucket from Larry. Sour because we didn't yeah. have time to brew a whole second batch that day. So you borrowed a bucket from right with no lid. From I'll let you talk about that. Yeah. Part so of I he wasn't sure, and I said we could come up with a bucket. I'm like, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. We got to do something. It'll be fun. And and then I went and filled the bucket up, brought it out, and then we took some. Uh, cling wrap over the top it's of it that, that sealed press it press and seal stuff so. which is a great brewer's <laughs> yes, tool it is yeah. i love I, that I, stuff i keep that stuff on hand because man, you can't it's like it's like water but yeah like water for a big it. seven gallon bucket going home from monument all the way back to Colorado springs um so i put it in the back seat but when i put it in the back seat of the car i spilled some so then i went out and cleaned it up because it's you know a little bit sticky and uh <laughs> i told him later that i spilled some but yeah and i said i'll sit in the back and hold it and whatever else and we figured it out and we got yeah, but we had to figure out what to do with it, and some right. of the guys had suggested that we just turn it into a sour or, or kettle, make a kettle sour. And how so, many sours had you made before? Uh, one, on accident. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very, very good, and in fact, won an award. Right. Um, but uh, in this in this instance, I mean, we actually, on our way home, we would stop by fermentation. We did. And they didn't have a lot uh, to choose from. Um, but the woman there, she 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 pointed out the Philly sour yeast, which I know you guys have highlighted on an yeah, episode we, before. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, we not really knowing what we should do with it or, or what, or what we could do with it. <laughs> I mean, this the Philly sour is actually a yeast. Yeah, it's not just yeah. a bug, right? It, it's not a bug at all. Yep. Right, and um, I believe it produces. The, it's a yeast that'll produce the lactobacillus. Lact uh, right? No, no, it produces lactic acid. Lactic acid. There, there's no bug component. No to bug it. component. Yeah. Okay, and I and and I think you guys put it in the kettle. So and then, so what we did? Yeah. So we took we didn't want to ruin Larry's bucket. Right. So we took one of Denny's buckets and we just poured the wort, transferred the wort into his bucket, and then we just sprinkled this Philly sour <laughs> yeast on that bucket. Very we scientific. Hadn't, we hadn't boiled anything. We hadn't done yeah, anything with yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're like, let's just let's sprinkle this on there. We're going to let it sit for a couple of days. And we're just going to see what happens, right? So the original gravity on this thing was, um, uh, no, that wasn't even the original gravity. The original gravity was like 1.054. And we let that, that fit the yeast uh, sit in that bucket for a couple of days. And it dropped 
In fact, my note here says it dropped because what was in that bucket might have been 1.051. So it dropped from 1.051 to 1.040 in a couple days just on its own. Okay. So then our plan was that Monday night we would get together and we would boil it up and add some hops, which we did. Yep. And, um, you know, treated it like a normal brew from that point. Hmm. Right. And then um, we got the gravity. We actually boiled to the point we got the gravity back up to 1.051. And then from there. Oh, you by know, boiling it down? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. By boiling it down. Okay. Um, with the hops, right? We boiled in about 60 minutes probably. And then, um, yeah. And then, you know, cooled that down like you normally do with homebrew and pitched the, the Seyfail US05 yeast, that, that dry yeast. I did rehydrate it with some nutrients and such. Um, and then we just let that ferment. Um, Literally a month. Left. Okay. For so that's interesting. So what you did was you used the Philly sour yeast as a substitute for lactobacillus or something. Because there wasn't and, any available. And, it, and he, it soured it, which from what I've heard and everything I've seen is the Philly sour will start creating acid. And then when it's con you know done all the acid it wants, then it starts converting it into alcohol. Um, so you're not supposed to see much of a gravity drop until it gets the pH down. Right. So that's interesting. So it was a and, and then experiment. you boiled it, killed it, right? And then you know, right? Yeah, that's so that's really a, interesting. A complete experiment, and um, really, I I credit, I still credit the the excellence of this beer yeah. to being Pikes Peak Sport. Oh, I've yeah. never had, <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. never had a bad beer, uh, no matter what I do. Uh, that came from their work so i think the only problem i've had with their beer is i've ended up with too much of it because <laughs> they you know it's a huge it's a huge mash tun so they'll drain it off and they're shooting for you know i don't know let's say 1060 well the first word out is you know like 1070 yeah and then the later word is a little lower and in the middle is at the right gravity you know where if you'd mixed it all together it would average out but you know if you only have five gallons so I usually I'm first in line, so I get a big heavy beer, yeah. and then I dilute it later to to hit my gravity. I know I've made some, I think one or two, or not one, but two or three big brews ago. I made like a a huge, I guess it should be a, a double IPA or something like that. I think it was like a nine percent beer, it was monstrous, I just because it's such a big gravity beer. So I'm sorry, no no lemon, nothing. nothing? No, it's a just straight, and we went with that, and then. Um, we had a tasting on the on the porch with the neighbors and everybody else, and had people give their opinions. We, as Jeremy can tell you about the. the so yeah, I, I think it was. I think you suggested at some point that, that we could you know add some add syrup some and yeah. call it a rolling yeah, device. Yeah. So we tried that, and you know first obviously just taste it as it is, and yeah. then after a few sips we can add some peach. I think we we experimented with a number of different um, syrups, and we determined that the peach was was right. our favorite. Anyway. Chardonnay is our our taster. Yeah. Our, our neighbor Charnay is a, a beer connoisseur and okay. lets us know what's the best. Okay. So uh, I, I got to say, so it's not terribly tart like you let up with. Yep. It's just nicely tart, but I am shocked at how tart it is con considering the Philly Sour was in there in a raw beer for three days. Two days? Two yeah. days. Two days, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I'm very surprised about that. Yeah, it was. And we had the, well, if it works, it works. If not, we'll just dump it. And then like, hey, that's not bad. All right, we'll bottle and... And go from there. Mm -hmm. So the typical process for the Philly sour yeast is you use it <clears> on <throat> regular yeast, right? Right. So yeah. you do the boil, hops, whatever, and then you pitch Chill it and put it in the fermenter, yeah. the Philly sour. And, then, and like I said, the Philly sour will create mm -hmm. lactic acid. Then when it's happy with how much acid it's made, it'll ferment the beer. Yeah. It was a fun yeah. experiment, to say the least. It was, yeah. Uh, yeah. If it works, it works. You know, it was, uh, yeah. it, I mean, it was, a f and thus the name. Yeah. yeah. Sour and free. Sour so and I, I think one of the lessons I learned as a home brewer is if I totally, if, if I were to totally screw up brew day, yeah, and pitch the yeast and, and just not happy with it, I could go and boil it up again and yeah. pitch something else yeah. and probably still come out with a good beer. Um, not that I want to do that. You but, would. I uh, mean, you you boil off. I would think you'd boil off any alcohol you got. Right. Yeah. Um. You know, in this case, it only went down, you know, ten points. And it's probably, you know, some of that was probably acid, which I don't think the acid would evaporate. I think that would stick around. When right. did you end up getting down to 5.6? 5.6 uh, ABV. It was a great beer in the summer. This past yeah, summer. Yeah, like, really. Had people over there like, oh, this is great stuff. And I'm yeah. like, 
okay, well, I, I don't know what I would call it, great stuff, like <laughs> people that, you know, would come by and taste my beer no, or whatever else. No, that's a great sound. Uh, I kind of chuckled at, like, they thought it was like, well, I like sours, but not this. This is really great. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. well. Uh, um, an extremely drinkable beer. Yeah. That, yeah. They, they, especially on the sitting on the, yeah, and, in the sun, yeah. hanging out. Yeah. No, I mean, a fruited <laughs> sour is yeah. terrific over yeah. the summer. Yeah. I go through them like crazy. Oh. Yeah, the peach is the way to go. Yeah. That is... Delicious. Yeah, we tried a couple of different uh, syrups to give it a touch, and it, it does. It adds a little much, but it's still really good. Oops. Here, I'll let you do it. Okay. Not responsible for the. Uh, if you add too much, then you're. Oh, that's too much, probably. <laughs> I put about a third of that pour. Yeah, so I think, first off, I think you end up making a great beer, yeah. no matter what yeah. the circumstances right. were. So now I need a punch more. And it was yeah. fun. It was fun to just experiment. Yeah, it was and, a, um, a good learning experience. Honestly, I think that was one of the fun things for me to do something with. I think that was the first time that I actually got to brew with somebody and as a new member of the club. Right. right. Mm. So it was kind of a neat thing that we collaborated on what we were going to do and, hey, why not, you know, whatever else. And one of the things I love about the club <laughs> is getting to brew with other brewers and collaborate on different things. Yeah, and stuff. absolutely. Yeah. As a newer brewer, that's always been a huge thing that I enjoyed was... Learning different techniques, different things, and yeah. learning about what you're doing. Well, it's still valuable as a you know older brewer because yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. hey, I never thought yeah. about doing it that way. <laughs> Wait, I've been told that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm actually interested in these syrups. Yeah, they're um, just coffee syrups. Like yeah, I ran store. into one at work, and it was yeah. like nut flavored. Yeah, well, hazelnut I'll, or not hazelnut, but something else nut flavored. I was I like, will, hey, I'll tell you about these syrups because I I use them in, in coffee. I got like at home. I got like. Salted caramel, classic caramel, you know, like sugar-free ones, huh. uh, vanilla, like sugar-free vanilla, and maybe sponsorship sugar-free uh, hazelnut. Yeah, <laughs> but what I I was looking at because um, my daughter's boyfriend Andrew, he he brought over like this this butterscotch toffee coffee, and I'm like, well, you know, a butterscotch syrup from from Tirani would be really good. So I googled it or looked at looked for it on Amazon, and these guys have like I feel like hundreds of different yeah. flavors yeah, yeah. of syrups. I thought out you were going to say you wanted to make a, a honey butterscotch one of your beers. But oh, I you were going to say, uh, no. yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, they do have, products, they do yeah. have, they have so many, <laughs> so many flavors of syrup that I never right? imagined. It'd be funny to get the butterscotch one and dose everybody's beer. Right, yeah, everybody. <laughs> oh, dude, it tastes like, <laughs> tastes like butterscotch. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you pronounce it diacetyl or diacetyl? Diacetyl is what I say. Yeah, I don't know if it's correct. That's how you pronounce it. Yes. Yeah, no one's ever said I pronounce all the English words correctly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, hundreds of flavors. It's, just, oh. it's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, terrific job, guys. Yeah, yeah. it is. We don't know impressive. what we're doing. Yeah, we should have <laughs> we'll them so. back for another episode, maybe about viewer feedback. Do they and some, some questions or something, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. We'll try to schedule something. Yeah. All right, that'd be great. We'd love <laughs> to be on be on set. Wear the same clothes though. Oh, yeah, same okay. clothes. Right. Same yeah. clothes. Yeah. 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 Work. Yeah. I don't have that many shirts. We'll so. have video evidence of what we want. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we got anything else to add? I don't think I don't, so. Yeah. yeah. Thanks well, for having us. Yeah. Oh, Thanks no for sharing. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Right. For cheers. 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 Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk, or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes. That's the case, baby. <laughs>